and investing strategies. And a lot of these strategies are how people evaluate stocks. Now, when it comes to investing strategies, you have technical stock analysis and fundamental stock analysis. And the first one we're going to talk about is technical. Now, technical stock analysis focuses on charts and past price movements as well as market behavior. And this is basically where you see all those charts that have the red and the green and the graphs. And traders try to predict future price movements by using past price behavior. Now, there's many different indicators and tools that are used in technical analysis. The four most common ones are trend indicators, momentum indicators, volatility indicators, and volume indicators. Now, generally speaking, it's better to focus on a few indicators indicators that you personally believe are important with whatever type of stocks you are evaluating and master them. And one thing I will say about indicators is many of them can actually be automated by software. So obviously a robot would be able to do these types of jobs better than you. So many of these can be automated. However, they cannot necessarily be interpreted by a robot. So if you want to get good at technical stock analysis, you have to figure out what types of indicators can't be automated. So trend indicators basically measure the direction and strength of a stock price by comparing prices to an established baseline. So an example of this one would be the moving average indicator, very common one that you'll see. And this is used to set up support and resistance levels as well as identifying trends that might be happening in the stock. So the example that I have there is a 100 day moving average, a 50 day moving average and a 200 day moving average. Momentum indicators tend to focus less on the direction and rather on the speed of the price movement. And usually it does this by comparing current closing prices to previous closing prices. So a very common example of this one would be the RSI or relative strength index. It measures the velocity of the change in trend, recent trading strength and the magnitude of the change. And there's an example here in the bottom left. I'm not going to go too deep into these because the video would just go too long. But you see the RSI down there on the bottom, you know, it's oversold on the left and then it's overbought on the right. And again, this is an indicator, it's not always perfect. And if you look at the stock price and when it was oversold, you can kind of see that it actually spiked in price around the time that it was oversold. And you can also see that when it was overbought, that's the time when it started lowering in price as well. And then there are volatility indicators. And this focuses on the measurement of the rate of price movement. So it doesn't really care all that much about the direction of price movement. It cares a lot more about the rate. So how volatile is the stock? And an example of this is Bollinger Bands. And you can kind of see on the screen, it measures the ceiling and the floor of a price relative to previous trades. And you can kind of see that when it goes outside of the Bollinger Bands, that's an indicator of what the stock price is about to do. Then we've got volume indicators. And these measure the impact of the trend based on the volume of stocks traded. So when you see the volume go up a lot, that means that either a lot of people are buying it or a lot of people are selling it, or maybe both. And an example of this is the volume rate of change. And this highlights the increase in volume at key points in the stock cycle, usually at the bottom, top, or breakout points of a stock's life cycle. So you kind of see on the screen here that this stock has kind of been going up, down, up, down, and it's, and it's had this trend where it kind of goes up, down, and it's slightly in a downtrend. And then all of a sudden, at the bottom, you see this volume indicator spike. And that's when the stock just keeps going. Instead of continuing this downtrend, it keeps going up. Now we're going to talk about fundamental stock analysis. Now, a lot of people think, you know, one is better than the other technical and fundamental. Again, I try to be as balanced as possible. I think both of them are very valuable. However, with that being said, I'm more of a long term investor and fundamental stock analysis does go a little bit better, more hand in hand with long term investing. But I'm not a technical stock analysis hater by any means. I think there's a lot of value in understanding technical stock analysis, but I do prefer fundamental stock analysis. So this looks at the economic, financial and social aspects that influence the price of a stock and the value or perceived value of a business. And it involves the analysis of a company, the market that the company sells for, the industry, economic conditions, as well as social conditions. And Warren Buffett is a big fan of fundamental stock analysis. And one thing that he says is he likes businesses where the products cost a penny to make. You can sell them for a dollar. You have some sort of competitive advantage, like you're the only one that can make a product just like that and that it's addictive. So people just keep coming back more and more for the product. They love it. So when he is looking at companies and evaluating whether he wants to invest in them, those are things that he really looks at. And that is his fundamental stock analysis strategy. So you can see that those things don't just involve looking at the numbers of a company, although looking at the numbers is important. It's also having the soft skills to understand the nuances and the social side of